should a parent be allowed to go to a reproductive technology clinic and decide either now or in the future that they want an athletic boy who is free of the Alzheimer's gene and free of other genes? And uh, who, who should decide that? Is that something that should be allowed? And this is a toss-up. If, if it doesn't cause medical harm, it's going to be very hard to ethically prevent parents from intervening in their children. I mean, parents already provide their children every possible advantage, you know, an extra 20 points on their SAT. They will go to great extremes to provide that. Um, you know, I, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be ethically problematic both ways, to allow them to, to make these decisions, which are idiosyncratic, or to prevent them from doing it. And, yeah. and, and I think that it's important to realize that decisions like this are going on all the time right now. There's the story of the uh, parents who have achondroplasia, who, ha who have dwarfism, and who selectively choose to terminate a pregnancy of a normal height child so that they can have a child who is, is like them. Uh, and so, so these, these, these are unusual situations, but uh, in our pe peculiar medical care system where you, you, can, you can sort of go to whatever office you want and convince somebody to do this for you, I think the danger arises where the pseudoscience that you referred to meets the choices about life and therapy. And that, that's the one area I'm really worried about because I think that for the most part, reputable practitioners are attempting to do these things in very ethical ways. But there's this danger that with the whole society's move to disintermediation, to you know, making everybody an expert on themselves and not needing the doctor, which is in some ways a very healthy move, that we're going to get to the point where we're making all these decisions without the facts. And, and that, that worries me a little. And the facts are important here, because the kind of selection that you're talking about, at least at present, is only feasible by something called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So this is in vitro fertilization, where eggs from the mother and sperm from the father mix together, and you end up with maybe eight, nine, ten embryos. It is possible, then, to take one cell off of each embryo after it's grown up to an eight-cell stage and do in a DNA do a DNA test and see what's there, and then decide which embryos to re-implant. In vitro fertilization clinics have traditionally been kind of left to do whatever the physicians involved felt was appropriate. But there's one sort of silver lining here in the scary scenarios about the designer babies, uh, the idea that yuppie couples would come along with enough resources to go to an IVF clinic and say, okay, here, I want a boy, and I want him to be captain of the football team, and I want him to get A-plus in math, and I want him to play first violin in the orchestra. So dial that in, would you? If they were able to find a group that would do that for them, it would turn out very badly, because all of those things, intelligence, athletic ability, good looks, musical talent, are governed by a very long list of genes, no single one of which has more than a small effect. If you've got eight to 10 embryos, you're not going to be able to optimize much of anything. And so that couple who's just paid the big bucks and figured they've won the lottery are going to ignore parenting, and they're going to have this kid who's at 16 up in his room smoking pot and listening to heavy metal music and flunking every course because the parents forgot about parenting. So it isn't going to work. So if somebody tries to sell you a designer baby, yeah, it's not a good plan.